All right, everybody. Well, good morning again. Uh, my name is Greg McGuire, and I am with the NAC Systems, uh, doing uh, Director of Sales for our uh, store, Solar Plus Storage platform. Uh, you may have recognized me from before. I was with the Dara Power. My brother Neil and I founded a Dara Power back in 2014, and recently we've joined with the NAC Systems to bring our energy storage expertise into their digital workflow flow and uh, quoting and, and cloud platform. So what you're going to see here today is uh, some of the stuff that we've been doing and, and uh, what we've been working on in, in the past. And then we can talk a little bit about the direction we're going in the future. But today uh, we wanted to talk about uh, our digital workflow and our, our cloud based platform for um, different uh, for your solar program. So I'm going to be joined here today by Mark Chapman. Uh, Mark will walk us through a demo uh, here in a, in, in a few minutes, but we'll talk um, through some slides here. You know, and, and I want to first start off by saying that, you know, we're business people. We've been in business. We've been in the solar business for many, many years, and we are certainly in a uh, tough environment these days. And, and there's probably a lot of people asking that question up top. You know, what should I be thinking about now? You know, what what is the la impact of the last eight weeks been? What should I be thinking about as far as getting back to business? How have I gone into business? Uh, how have I conducted business? And, you know, what lessons learned do I have going forward into uh, the new reality? Because we don't really know what that's going to be. If anybody's been out to a restaurant recently, it's not the same. It's not the same uh thing that you had eight weeks ago and there's going to be a new normal that we've all got to come to grips with and that is going to define a lot of uh, our businesses and, and our customers and our customer demands and and what direction we're going to go so we're going to talk about a little bit about the direction today and then uh, what we specialize in with an act is our digital platform and and how you can uh, do that, how you can use this, the digital platform for your solar project management. So um, again, this is important because uh, either you're working for a business or you own a business, you need to know um, what, you need to be able to read the tea leaves of what's going on. <clears throat> and what we're seeing, of course, is companies that are going to survive are figuring out how to engage effectively while working remotely. And that is something uh, that is going to be really, really important from our point of view going forward, uh, because we think no, there's two reasons for that really. Number one, it, we don't know for sure when we're gonna be back to full operations. And number two, we show that you can actually save a lot of money and cut your operating expenses using digital platforms and really create, come at it as a, a much leaner uh, customer uh, or leaner company focused on your customer and getting those sales. So some of the things you're probably seeing, uh, some of the shifting sales pipelines, you might be working off of a backlog log of projects right now, uh, but maybe the sales pipeline is not as strong. Um, you might be having problems uh, procuring parts and, uh, and, and supply items. Yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of employee concerns and turnover potentially starting to happen. And, that creates its own financial stress and, and then there's a lot of back to work questions. So you gotta make some decisions going forward here. Uh, from my perspective as a business owner, I've got two. Uh, I need to make sure that I am uh, cutting my capital costs as much as possible and focusing on streamlining uh, my workflow in a environment of potentially high turnover. So that's what we're gonna talk about is how do you using that cloud platform for digital workflow management and basically adopt a single platform for your energy business. So um, interestingly enough, we did a little bit of research uh, internally and we came up with, you know, what is the COVID-19 impact really? Uh, and so here's some of the things that we've seen we kind of broke it off into tariff and incentive adjustments and then the customer demand. So um, just when you think that everybody's gonna be doing their part to cut costs and, and help out, you find that the utilities, particularly in places like California, are actually having to raise their utility rates. And that's anywhere from six to 8% uh, 
with SoCal Edison, PG&E, and there's a lot of different reasons for it, and they didn't certainly time it to, uh, because of the COVID-19 impact, uh, it's just something that was coming. And uh, that's, you know, that's a big jump. You know, when, if you're out of work or your customers are out of work and all of a sudden their utility bills go up seven, 8%, uh, that's a big hit. And so, you know, the demand is actually going to be there because uh, it's probably gonna improve the solar and, uh, you know, IRR and solar and storage. Um, but we're also going to see um, weaker customer demand in, in the first place. So uh, that you just got to, that's the kind of the big picture. So somewhere in the middle is what we're going to uh, have to operate in, I think. So at the bottom line, though, is, you know, energy resiliency itself is taking a front seat. And a lot of people are really paying attention to that. Uh, Sunrun, you know, in their Q4 uh, 2019 results, they said 50% Bay Area sales and 35% of California sales writ large were with storage. So that's a big change from a number of years ago. Everybody a number of years ago wanted storage, but when it came down to looking at the economics of it, they didn't really want to pay for it. Now we're finally seeing this idea that uh, of a capability-based discussion, you, you get out of the ROI discussion about you know, how long it's going to take to pay back. And now it's more like people are like, hey, uh, the utility is great and it's great to be grid tied, but uh, they're just not as reliable as I would like them to be. And now that I'm working from home, I need to have that reliability built in. So we think that solar plus storage, whether you're either doing the whole thing or you're just adding on storage later on, uh, is is going to be a, a strong market in 2020 and beyond. And certainly that's what we're seeing. Massachusetts doubled the smart program to 3.6 gigawatts. Uh, we predict that energy storage is still going to grow another 19% year over year from last year. And there's some of the reasons. Uh, Utah is uh, one of the states is really uh, focused on that self-sufficiency and storage sales are really uh, going, uh, you know, taken off over there. So the problem though with storage is solar is kind of, I always like to say it's kind of binary, right? Sun comes up and the, um, the solar panels power and then sun goes down and then it shuts down. Well, batteries are a lot different. The batteries are going to be, um, they really need to be focused on what you're trying, what the customer is trying to do. Are they trying to focus on backup power and they want to keep a, a load, you know, their, their, their uh, energy stored? Do they want to use it for peak shifting uh, to reduce their time of use rates? You know, what is the purpose? Um, and, you know, I'm certainly happy to take any questions on, on storage as well. So during times of when things need to get a little bit leaner, there's two things you need to focus on. Number one is increasing those revenue producing activities. The second one is reducing operating expenses. So our platform is kind of focused on this. Like I said, we're business people and we've taken this approach of what can we do? What kind of software tools can we put into place that just makes sense to a business owner and a company that is uh, trying to do these two things? And so certainly, uh, you know, being able to expand your digital marketing, engaging customers, uh, reducing your time to uh, get a proposal in front of the customer, all those kind of things directly contribute to your revenue producing activities. And what you're trying to do is spend more time doing that kind of stuff and less time doing the, the overhead stuff of running a business and tracking down the proposals and tracking down the people that are supposed to be submitting them. How, how many of you are still doing proposals and everything by email, for instance? You're trying to find that last proposal that you did and because you have a customer that's similar to it, you don't want to reinvent the wheel, um, but you have to go digging through all these emails or maybe somebody that was on your team is no longer on the team. So now you're trying to go through their emails. Wouldn't it be a lot simpler if you just had everything in one place organized in such a way that you could track a pipeline, you can track your documentation, keep all that. And so then a year later, if the customer calls up and says, hey, I've got an issue with my system, you don't go, you don't have to roll a truck right away to go do uh, what I call discovery learning. You get to go into your system, pull it all up in the new system that we're going to be rolling out. You might even be able to uh, pull up the system remotely and look at the parameters. And so before you ever send a truck out there, 
you've got people that uh, you've got a team that already knows what's going on and you might be able to troubleshoot it before that even happens before without even going out there. So those are the kind of things that we're talking about. Those are the kind of things that increase your time for revenue producing activity. It reduces your operating expenses. You're not rolling trucks when you don't need to. You're not paying people to drive and sit in traffic for half hour, 45 minutes to go see a customer that you installed a year ago. Um, that's really not going to produce any more revenue for you at all. We're on probably day 57 of this uh, shutdown and work, work from home type stuff. So I think it's time to bring a little bit of humor into these, uh, these webinars. So, you know, this kind of really struck me, uh, you know, I flew for the Navy for 25 years and we had Murphy's first law or laws of combat. And the, the first one was always no plan ever survives first contact with the, we call it the enemy, but in this case, the competition. So you have a plan, you're, you're out there on the left and you're, you see a destination on the right and you think, oh, this is going to be easy. I'll just, you know, put, do what I always do and I'll get this uh, solar storage contract going and um, we'll, get, we'll get it over the line, finish line, and then we'll make it happen. But the reality is more on the bottom. We have all these pitfalls and you have obstacles. And every time you think you're going to be able to cross the pitfall, you have to take a different uh, approach to it. So knowing that that's the way it is, uh, we have this, we always kind of have a plan A, a plan B, and then we really have the, the plan that we actually execute. And so what we're trying to do with an act is take that business owner approach and go, okay, how do we streamline this stuff so that the stuff that's repetitive is easily duplicated and doesn't become a surprise to everybody involved, especially whoever the um, customer is and who the owner. So here you go. Here's your cartoon for the day. Um, and it's project time. You know, your sales team got out there. Uh, they've been working the, with the customer. They're uh, trying to figure out, uh, you know, what the customer needs. They've gotten to that. And then the process starts to break down. And so this is just, you know, a cartoon representation of an aspect of that. Uh, but the bottom line is we don't want uh, this to be a mystery. We want a very smooth system. And when you're working remotely, that actually can become harder, but we can make it easier as well. So uh, a little bit of project management 101. Uh, you know, these are really the, the five steps for uh, that you can see in project management. And I just wanted to kind of hint or hit around these. Uh, Mark is going to be showing you different steps of how we incorporate these five steps. Uh, but the bottom line is first thing you got to do is initiate. You got to discover it. You got to scope the project. You got to identify who the stakeholders are. And, and what's really important is that expectation management. That's a little bit harder when you're doing all the remote work. Uh, but it's also a little bit clearer because you can explain that to the customer going, you know what, we're, we're not going to be going door to door. Uh, with our customers right now. So we're going to have to really refine this initiation phase and get our story down, our script down and how we're gonna you know, drive our sales. So we got a plan, we got to clearly define the outcome. This is where the who, what, when, where and how it comes in. Uh, I also throw in the financing piece because and financing means not just paying for the system but processing all the incentives that are out there. And then on the storage side with SGIP for instance, that's uh, very, it's, it can be very um, time consuming and, and you need to develop some expertise in this. But we've made that about as simple as we can here in the ENACT platform and you'll see that here in a minute. Uh, finally, you gotta, you gotta execute, you gotta schedule the, the installation, you gotta document it, follow through, make sure you're getting the interconnections completed. Once that's done, you wanna monitor and control it. You wanna make sure that you've actually attained, attained your scope you want to QA that workflow. What did you leave out? Did, did somebody uh, integral to the project leave midstream because of the COVID thing? Maybe they went, uh, they had to take 10 days off, maybe two or a month off because of the virus or something like that. You can't operate in this environment if you don't have access to all that stuff. And if you're trying to find that through everybody's emails, you're going to just be spinning your wheels and you're not reducing those operating expenses. You're not focusing on the RPAs. One of the things I threw in there that I always found uh, in my Navy flying days was the lessons learned. You know, what are the lessons learned that you had um, from uh, this latest uh, workflow that you went through and, and what did you do about it? How did you incorporate that? Finally, you need to close it out. 
and that is uh, the final QA check to go through, make sure you got it all done, make sure all the documentation is in one place so the warranty can be followed up a year or two later if it comes down to that. And so now we get to the digital platform. So, you know, here's how it adds value uh, to your business. And again, think of it in the, the um, in, you know, how in, the, in terms of the RPAs and the reducing the operating expenses, but it allows you to grow your solar business rapidly, scale the operations and leverage all your platform services. And those are just a few of the things that we have right there, but I really like that live collaboration platform piece. Uh, once you get online with our platform, your people can be in different places. You, your installation tech can be out on the job site. You can call these things up on your phone, log into the system and, and find everything that you need right then, there and then simply. Next slide. So with that, I'm gonna um, kind of show you uh, how we're doing it here. So on the left in the green, you see the Envision platform. That's really for developing new solar and storage projects. The Engage platform on the right, that is um, really gonna be our fleet management tool for your customer assets out there. This is what we are work, this is what we brought from Adara and what we're gonna start integrating into the ENAC platform. But you can clearly see you have an end-to-end -end platform here, everything from design and engineering, financing and contracts, uh, the CRM and project management, and then down the road, if you're uh, such uh, size that you wanted to do a fleet management for your customers, um, installed systems, we can certainly bring that in and you can show that to you as well. So with that, I'd like uh, to just con continue to invite you to see, put any questions out that you might have, but I am going to um, introduce Mark now and let him take over for the demonstration. Mark. Thanks, Greg. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. And I'm sharing my screen now. You just let me know if that's coming through okay. All set. Perfect. Uh, great. So welcome everybody and thanks for joining today. I'm going to give a, a demo of the ENAC platform today and we're going to focus in on um, our, our workflow management, how you can manage projects remotely, um, keep your team organized, and make sure that your process for you know, every milestone is being followed to a T. Um, so feel free to type in any questions as we go along, but we're going to go through um, the workflow setup and how it works. Um, so the first thing you see when you log into an act is your pipeline. You can see the entire list of your customers. You can sort these columns so that you can really dive into any status or any project type that, that you'd like. So you can customize your view. If we go into the dashboard, you can get more of a graphical representation of the pipeline so you can see how your pipeline stands at each stage. And we're going to show you how these stages are fully configurable to mimic your actual process. But these are just kind of sample steps you can see. So you can really see kind of how many projects you have in each stage. You can also look at it by a dollar amount so you can gauge your, you know, your sales forecast or, or, your, or your pipeline value. Um, so if we were to go into like the first step, like the lead step, I can go in as a salesperson and see what tasks I have to do today. So the first step being like an email introduction, I can say, okay, which projects do I have that are in this step? Um, I can see that there's this uh, demo customer that is a new lead. So I'll go into that project. Um, and as you can see, the project details clearly show all of the customer information, their address, their contact information. You can see their uh, local utility provider. Uh, we have a full list of, of utilities for the entire US and a lot of locales worldwide, as well as you know, all the rate schedules you need, both residential and commercial. So you can really go in and analyze the customer's usage based on you know, the information that you receive, whether it's an, an annual dollar amount or um, kilowatt hours per month, or um, if you have a, an actual interval file, like a green button file, you can also upload that for detailed load modeling. So you can view a lot of information about the customer here. 
Um, and for each project, you have a dedicated workflow. So you set up your process, and this is how you'll be able to manage your entire pipeline by um, scripting out that process using our workflow template. So you can see all the steps from um, contacting the lead and beginning the process through uh, signing the customer contract, um, going through the permitting process and actual install process to commissioning. So you can really have each step or milestone customized based on your project type or your company or locale. And we'll show you how these steps can um, be configured to keep your team um, organized. So you can see each stage, you can have a particular stage owner um, so that that's somebody that will be alerted or will show in their pipeline every time there's a project that's in their specific stage. Um, and in this particular workflow, the first step would be to just do an email introduction to the customer. You have a new lead um, and you just simply want to reach out, do an email introduction as I'm going to be your solar consultant. So that step, um, you can go in and, and, and check this box. It'll bring up the um, pre-configured email template that we've set up. That's just saying, hi, demo customer. Thank you for submitting a request for quote from ABC Solar Company or whatever your, your company name is. And so you can script these emails so that they are, are templates. They show up every time. And you can simply just um, click this box to send that customer um, their introductory email. I'm actually going to go into an email inbox and show um, what that email looks like. So here you see uh, you got an email from ABC Solar Company, Solar Project Inquiry Received. And I can now reply directly to this email, um, you know, connect with the solar consultant um, and go through any next steps. And now to, to, to move on, if you were to actually schedule a consultation with that customer, again, you can click this box here and the pre there can be pre-configured activities or questions to ask. You can say, yes, I received their utility bills. I can upload any additional pictures or data that I've received. And then if I click step complete, it'll bring me a new email template saying, uh, confirming your virtual solar consultation. You can go in here, edit the date, just say um, May 15th, 2020, and click send to send that email as well. Now, if I go back to my email inbox, see a new email um, confirming my solar consultation for the 15th. And if you want to include um, webinar or, or go to meeting or zoom links in that so they can directly go to see there um, that can work as well. So there's a number of different ways to configure these emails and these workflow milestones to match your process really automate the messaging for every single step of the process so that every customer every sales rep provides a, a similar level of experience to the customer. So just to back up quickly, we're going to go back to the project details for this project. Um, so once you do have a consultation set up, um, just want to do a quick run through of our um, solar design and proposal tool. Um, so once you have your consultation scheduled and you're ready to go through that with the customer. You may have some designs you've already pre-configured. Um, for the sake of, of speed today, we're just going to go in and edit an existing quote rather than create a new one. Um, so if I go into the last quote here, I can just click this edit button. It'll bring us into our design tool where I can see the layout that I've already designed for this home. If I have any edits or want to change the hardware, um, the inverter, the type of panels, um, uh, add or, or drop panels, I can do anything like that here. Um, I've got a 7.47 kilowatt system for this homeowner um, with a solar edge inverter. And all of these hardware and options are configurable based on what options you offer in your locale um, or, or, or by company. Um, so please uh, ask us for any of these types of setup items. 
And then you can obviously pick your post-solar rate schedule, utility inflation. You can do a meter allocation if you have a commercial or multi-meter application where you need to allocate one solar system to different, uh, different meters. And that's as easy as you need to get to click on the system results, get your system offset, pre and post solar consumption, pre and post solar cost by tier. So you can really see um, exactly what your, the effects of your solar system are, confirm that that's your final system design, um, that the solar performance ratio looks okay, the solar system generation matches your expectations, um, avoided cost of energy. You can really look um, at the base um, financial metrics of any system design here. So once you have your system design, you can go in, into the uh, financing tab where you can compare different methods of finance, whether it's an upfront purchase or different uh, loan options. You can compare up to two versus cash. You can have customized cost breakdowns. So here, this project is priced automatically based on the number of panels, um, on the um, rail and mounting costs, and, and hardware costs, and labor costs that I've already um, pre preset for this type of project. Um, if I want to add do any adders, like say add a battery to this project, I can click here. It will add that uh, the cost of the battery to the system, and include that in the proposal. Um, but if I just want to stick with solar only, I can then check this. You can see it's automatically pricing this at uh, $2.95 a watt or $22,053. You can compare uh, monthly finance payments. And uh, that's all you need to go ahead and create your proposal. Now, if I go back into that project, I can show you the proposal it's just generated. Here we go. So here's a sample of one of our proposal templates. Um, your proposal can be branded and messaged uh, for your company based on your color scheme. Um, and we can customize the templates to show any metrics or, or graphs or, or type of cash flows that you'd like. Um, so again, these are fully customizable templates. So now we'll go back into the project. As you can see, for each project, you have all of your quotes um, recorded. You obviously have your workflow uh, template where you can mark the dates and things and progress the project based on the milestones. And you also have a documents tab where you can keep track of any documents that are required for that project. So they're all in one place accessible by any team member. Um, nothing gets lost in email or in different systems. Uh, so everything stays in one place as Greg had uh, mentioned before. And now we'll just go into the actual setup of the workflow so you can see uh, how configurable this can be. So you can add as many milestones as you'd like. Um, you can customize the names of them. And within each step, you can customize either questions you need to answer, you know, whether it's um, roof type, roof age, uh, main panel rating, any questions you can have answered in here. You can also have required documents that you need to upload, whether those are um, site pictures, utility bills, um, authorization from a homeowners association, any document you can have to configure either a template or a, a place to upload any document. As well as alerts, you can add alerts so that specific task owners or the customer can receive those custom emails. Um, so here's where you can configure the custom emails to do a template for any step. 
um, and you can use any of these custom tags uh, to draw information about that uh, salesperson or that customer into the email so that it's, it automatically creates the right email for each customer. You can choose between different templates, uh, configure your own, uh, so it's completely editable to, to mimic your actual process. And now we're going to go through, once you've set up your actual workflow uh, to your process, we'll go back to the dashboard here where you can actually see, you know, where your projects are. And if you want to get even more detailed, either connect to another system or download all this data for reporting purposes, you can easily export all of your project data into uh, a CSV or an Excel file. So as you can see, I have my pipeline here and I can see uh, the, the projects going through different stages and where the projects are, are slowing. Um, so if I want to create an actual um, report for this, I export this data into Excel and then I'll bring up a sample report of my pipeline here. And here it'll show my entire pipeline, select all the data fields that I want to show, uh, bring in all of the milestone dates from the particular workflow for the stages that have gone there. And using this data, I can do pretty much anything. I can um, figure out the timelines uh, that I'm averaging for different stages of my project, whether it's from um, getting a new lead to creating a proposal, or if it's from um, a signed contract to receiving a approved permit, um, the install time it takes for me from the time I start to finish an install, or the time from install to permission to operate. Um, so I can see here that my total average timeline for residential projects is 149 days so that I can properly convey those expectations to the customers. And I could also look at different metrics like lead conversion or sales conversion and say that I'm converting 25% of my proposal sent into signed contracts so that you can do more uh, accurate forecasting, uh, get these metrics in terms of uh, determining marketing spend. Uh, there's really no limit to the type of data you can pull and the type of reports you can make here. Um, so again, we're here to, to help configure all of these for you. Um, set it up in a way that mimics your process and adds value to your company. So I'll just leave it here and see if uh, we'll go through any questions there might be. Uh, Greg, if you have anything to add, feel free to chime in. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Actually, one question did come in, like, how did somebody get started uh, with the Enact platform? And, you know, what, what kind of, what have you seen with, um, you know, how, how the a company comes on board and, and use, how many users they have and, and, and who in the company would work with this? Good question. Um, we have no limit of number of users or minimum, so it can be as small as one to three user uh, teams that are going to uh, manage their process from even 100 person teams and sales teams that are managing thousands of projects. Um, so we see the full range and we have different solutions and, um, and pricing schemes to help every level of customer. Okay, good. All right. Uh, well, if you, maybe you can go back to the, uh, well, actually, um, yeah, the other, um, Part of that, though, is, you know, what um, what what have kind of companies said has been the best part of you know, of adopting a platform like this? You know, what's kind of their their takeaways after they get involved with it? Well, it's really the ability to manage the team um, without being either across the room or or at the same desk. Um, you can be really in different places, different places in the world, uh, where your pipeline is all managed in one central place. So the ability to um, you know keep a central repository of all the information and everything that's gone on with each project. Um, whether there's turnover in the sales team or management, um, everything can be quickly transferred 
um, and assign to the current team members so that every project is still being managed and attended to correctly. Yeah, great. And that, you know, I, the other thing I've seen too, uh, to add to that, Mark, is, you know, teams, you know, they'll, ha they'll have their weekly sales meeting. Well, maybe before it was in the office, now it's maybe on a Monday, but everybody's remote. So they'll use this as the common platform to walk through all the different projects that they have uh, and then what the status are, and then basically assign actions to the team uh, to follow up on and move this along. One of the, the coolest features of this is really to, to identify, um, you know, how long, you know, how long the average uh, proposal takes to get a signature. How long is it the, uh, how long is it taking to get an interconnection agreement? Those kind of things. And so you can now, as a business person, you can kind of look at that and go, okay, wow, this one's two to three standard deviations beyond what it should be. I need to do a deeper dive into that and find out what's going on. Great. Okay, uh, great. We'll keep the questions coming. I thanks for all those so far. And uh, we'll go back here to the uh, presentation. And on to the next slide there. So, you know, what Mark talked about was, um, you know, how these different pieces um, you know, all kind of come together into one platform. And, you know, we kind of did an analysis of our, of our own tools that we use and, and how we can see these integrated into uh, the platform. And so here's just a number of the different capabilities and existing tools that are uh, built into the platform, uh, you know, whether it's Google Maps or the CRM or uh, Google, you know, Excel spreadsheets, all these kind of things. Again, what we try and do is focus on the tools that people use and then see how we can bring those together uh, into one platform for, you know, as a uh, display uh, and, and collaboration. So, you know, what we'd like to do here is, is partner with you on your journey. Um, this is kind of the range of services that we offer for an energy business, everything from helping with sales and marketing, design and engineering, the installation process. And then the piece that we're bringing in now is the fleet customer service. Uh, we're really, really excited about adding that piece to it because it really becomes now the only true platform out there that has this full end-to-end uh, -end spectrum from uh, workflow management and project management into um, also including the, uh, the asset management. So a lot of other people you know, might have a system that kind of is good at one thing or one thing in particular. What we've kind of focused on is, you know, the big picture. How do you how do we help people um, drive those revenue producing activities? Uh, I think it's very clear how this is helpful in cutting down those operating expenses, you know, as far as keeping uh, a lot of overhead on board. Uh, as you may have lost employees due to turnover or uh, you may want to be bringing some more people on, you can just introduce them to this platform and go, okay, this is the tool that we use to conduct business on a day to day. And if you really believe in uh, being a remote partner, you have to have a tool like this. I mean, it's just, there's no doubt, right? There's, you have to have this, it's kind of the akin to having uh, a building that you normally go to. Well, if you don't really have that right now, you don't have an office that you're going to, this becomes that virtual office and this becomes that tool. And if and when you ever do go back to uh, the, the building that you're in, you might think about the size of the building that you need based on having tools like this. You might have certain capabilities in there, uh, but you might get more comfortable working with remote teams. You might be able to expand your business beyond the zip codes that you're currently in by having people in different areas. And if you're not thinking like that, I think you're missing out on a big opportunity because that's where business is going right now. That's reading the tea leaves. That's where we see this happening. Um, getting people into a project management tool. The one other thing that you know I was tell telling Deep last night about, um, you know, getting those certifications. And you know, this is uh, a lot of people came to us today courtesy of the NAPSEP website, and we'd like to thank them for, um, you know hosting us here that's been uh, a great relationship where we've had with them for years but they've got awesome amounts of uh, awesome certifications and uh, one of the things I went through them last night that what they want to see though is they want to see the paperwork they want to see the uh, tools that you have uh, you're basically done what you said you're you're doing 
And so here's a platform to show them. You know, everything's in one place. Uh, if you're trying to get their uh, installation technician uh, certification, all the documentation that you're going to need, it's probably going to be in here or you can load it. If you're, own, if you're leading the company and you're owning a company or you're the operations manager, uh, one of the things that's going to be really important is getting your people qualified and keeping them certified through this, this, uh, this virtual slowdown here. And so, again, lots of different ways to approach the use of a digital platform. Uh, but it's certainly very clear to me that um, if you're going forward into the new environment here, this is going to be really, really important. So that's us. That's an act. Uh, we're driving the distributed energy ecosystem. When we talked about the distributed energy ecosystem before, we, we thought we were just talking about uh, you know, distributed systems, but now we're turn, talking about distributed workforces too. So uh, we understand both aspects of that. We built a platform to help you sell those kind of systems. And uh, you know, building that plan, remember that slide with that, that kid on the bike, it's not, a, it's not a clear path and it's not a clear road. So uh, we're here to help you get through those hills and valleys and, and uh, make you successful. So uh, I did see that there's a, one other question here is, uh, from Zaid, is a platform user friendly or need face-to-face -face training? Uh, well, we do provide the training, uh, Zaid, if, we, if you want to, uh, if you'd like to participate in that. Uh, but, you know, we think that it's pretty uh, user friendly and, and it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, expertise to navigate around it. And then once you get into it, you'll, get, you'll even learn a few more things about it. You know, you can give us a call and we'll be happy to help you out on that. Okay, well, great. Well, I thank everybody for um, joining us here today and certainly reach out to us. Uh, you can call us at the, uh, the phone number there, reach out to me um, on, the, uh, on the email address there. Um, oh, I've just got a couple more questions here. Um, how can your system help us in commissioning the solar system? Uh, well, that's the asset management tool. That's the um, that's the uh, piece that's going to uh, that we're building out here, and you're going to be able to uh, see where uh, yeah, as you commission that system, you can see it come online, and you can be able to track it and you can watch your performance. And that's really important too, especially in the storage world. You know, your salespeople are going out there and uh, promising something to the customer. Uh, you want to make sure that you can actually monitor the systems and, and see uh, what they're actually doing. Heidi asks, is there a way to integrate with QuickBooks desktop aside from downloading it to a CSV? Uh, yes, we can integrate with QuickBooks. Uh, some of them do the CSV uh, upload. I use QuickBooks all the time myself, and, uh, but there's also the API level integration. Uh, and also about DocuSign. Yep, DocuSign is already integrated in there. You don't need a separate account for that. So that's uh, a bonus. All right. Uh, and I talked about the uh, user friendly. So yeah, great. I appreciate everybody uh, from joining. And certainly don't, don't be, if you have any more questions, just reach out to us today. Um, you know, we'd like to give you a demo, uh, personal demo of the of the platform. And if you want to uh, like to follow up with us, uh, you know, we can certainly reach out and do that for you and, uh, you know, kind of show uh, how we can use a, the Enact system and how you can use it. And so again, we're going to come at it from a, a little bit different approach. We're going to be a partner with you, knowing that the environment that we're in, and we're going to show you how you can use the Enact platform to uh, help drive those revenue producing activities, cut your expenses and uh, continue on in business. It's really, really important everybody to, to be thinking like that because uh, we don't know where this is going to go here. Um, we think that the people that adopt, adapt to the uh, remote work environment fastest uh, at the least cost is going to be the most successful. So that's what we're here to help you with. And with that, Thank you everybody for joining us today and uh, hope to see you out there soon.